let me uh, uh, jump right into the point which I want to talk about. Uh, everybody, uh, anyone who heard about um, way, uh, WPO, WPO, or SPO? Anybody heard about it? Well, as you can read over there, uh, WPO is uh, Web Performance Optimization. It's like uh, a little um, brother or sister from CEO. Everybody familiar with CEO? I guess, yeah. You're familiar? That's really nice. Uh, and SPO uh, stands for Server Performance Optimization. And I like to talk to you, uh, I like, I like to, talk to you about some things uh, which are really interesting stuff um, uh, as we speak. Well, my name is Ray Bachman. I'm from uh, Jira uh, and Jirio. Um, I've been around uh, using Joomla for a while. Uh, started in the Mambo days. And besides Joomla, I'm also working with Magento as a consultant, as a trainer. Uh, well, what happened last year, um, there was a really nice webmaster blog on the website from Google. Um, you probably can't see it, but it stated the 9th April last year, which uh, appeared that Google is um, using web speed as an issue for monitoring um, websites according to speed. Probably you're familiar with the website master uh, tool. On the left hand side on uh, labs, you probably see uh, some graphics coming along how um, your website, for instance, is doing. And what Google did last Wednesday is that besides the webmaster tools, they announced a really nice thing within Google Analytics. Uh, so it wasn't only the, the monitoring bit in the webmaster tools anymore, but also within analytics uh, as we speak, they are monitoring the, speech, uh, the, uh, the speed uh, from the website. The only thing you have to do is uh, adding a, a little amount of code in the Google Analytics uh, uh, widget. And from there on, you can see all things going uh, being monitored in the, in the website itself. And what's stated, and the thing is that um, I see it on my screen, but the screen is really slow. It has effect on AdWords and on the ranking of the search from Google. So uh, as we speak, Google is more and more um, looking for uh, uh, websites on the internet and definitely with Joomla. And I'm gonna, see, uh, gonna show you later on some more information on that. That, that speed is an essential bit right now for a, a really good Joomla website. Um, so what, what do we aim for? Uh, you probably, if you're familiar with Joomla, or maybe if you're familiar with uh, Google Webmasters, this uh, screen I created uh, listed uh, that, that um, Google is uh, monitoring the websites at approximately one and a half seconds. That's the aim level they're gonna use. And uh, this is from a really uh, live website we are using for some while, as you can see, and it's really on the line. It's a really good uh, optimized website for Joomla in total. Um, but the main issue is I have seen a lot of Joomla websites around, and most of them are definitely, if they are broad, uh, sometimes it takes like three, four, five, even 10 seconds to retrieve. And I mean, if you've got a fast DSL connection or fiber, it, it's fast anyway. But I mean, if you are on a mobile phone or on a really slow uh, um, environment like here, your website, it's really that slow. And it takes for ages, you know, to retrieve. So um, it's really hard and, and also interesting to see what, what we can do that and how we can do that with Joomla. Well, here's a screenshot from some data uh, Google uh, listed uh, last Wednesday. So. Officially, I've been tracking this uh, since Wednesday, so I only got data from Wednesday up till Sunday, so and that's uh, only a small amount. But Google has been testing that for some, some time already. And as you can see, this only works, maybe a lot of people haven't seen this, only works in the new version of Google Analytics. On the top uh, right corner, there's a new button located. If you log into Google Webmasters, and just click on new preview or new version and you get this view. And within the view, there's a list called speed uh, or site speed uh, where you can go along and see the graphics. Uh, the only thing is you have to adjust the widget from uh, 
the Google uh, parameters itself. Otherwise, search on the internet. We wrote a blog on our website about it. Where you can click on the link and retrieve the code, and you put them in your JavaScript, and everything has been tracking so far. Um, well, a question for you guys. Is Joomla slow? Anybody? Is Joomla slow? OK. OK, that's a good way. Good point. I'm sorry? That's a good thing. So you're familiar with uh, uh, the more extensions you put on top of the uh, plain old Joomla website, the slower it sometimes gets, depending on the good written codes uh, you know, uh, on, on top. And it's not only the code, but also the graphics. I mean, if you've got a really nice looking theme, but the theme code sucks, um, it really can slow you down big time. So what we've done is we've created a, a, a case. Uh, and you can test it uh, later on on a faster website. I mean, I can imagine you guys who got internet right now, but go ahead and uh, test it uh, when you get home and you use a DSL. Joomla-speed.com. Uh, and what we try to do is, let me see, uh, and this one is slash demo. It's a plain old Joomla website, as you can see, straight uh, once you install it. If you, want, uh, if you run this website through, for instance, GT Metrics, that's an analytics tool for uh, analyzing why slow and uh, Google speed test uh, for the variables where, uh, you know, uh, as we speak, uh, everything's been, been, been running for, uh, you can see that Joomla scores okay but it's just a plain Joomla website so what we try to do is um, before you know we're gonna build this website up to our corporate website or some some website we want to use for our customers uh, what's really important uh, uh, besides installing all the extensions that are listed on the jet is <laughs> and <laughs> I've seen a lot of <laughs> People are using, you know, almost every extension listed on the Jets. Like, yeah, why, why not go ahead, have fun? And, and but there are so many extensions out there are, are really good, really good, and some of them are um, okay. And uh, some uh, some of them which are okay uh, with a little bit tuning, you know, on the end you can get a really quick and faster website. Um, for instance. Um, you're probably familiar with, with Joomla art, you know, the guys are here with U theme and with Rocket theme and there are so many templates, you know, uh, guys over there. Uh, they're doing a really good job. I mean, for instance, uh, the guys from U theme there that I got uh, minimal, minimalizing from the codes uh, included right now in the warp framework, uh, zipping the codes, we're going to look into this uh, much further. Uh, so they, they've been doing a lot of good stuff lately which really optimize uh, your Joomla website you know, on the end. And once you've had done, uh, you, once you created it and, and you've been through all the codes and you optimize it, what we've done is we used uh, the same website, but we used a different theme and we uh, uh, looked into every rule that Google and Wiseflow comes along with and we tried to do as getting the maximum out of Joomla. And as far as this looks, this is the only uh, website right now. So it's just uh, joomla-speed.com. And you can look. Uh, everything is being monitored still every night. So it's really nice for you. And uh, the only one who has listed 99% uh, score in, in Google and in, in, in Yahoo, 100% score. Um, the thing is, once you look this website on your computer back home, you will see uh, um, it's totally cached. Uh, everything about the good components within Joomla are maximized up to the most level which is uh, available. Otherwise, we wouldn't reach you know, the 100% at all. Um, this one uh, is being located uh, from uh, uh, this website, G2 Metrics. Uh, it's, it's located in Vancouver. So, uh, and this host, uh, website is hosted in, in Netherlands. So it takes them. 1.22 seconds to retrieve. If you uh, start them up from, for instance, here in Kerkrade or, or in Amsterdam, uh, once it's cached, it's 1.2 milliseconds each request. So it's really, really quick. Um, 
what have we done for, for getting this uh, Joomla website optimized? For instance, really important thing is professional web hosting. This Joomla website is hosted right now at a VPS, a dedicated VPS. I know you guys, you probably are it's like, okay, just a demo website. But this one is located on a dedicated VPS using two gigabyte, two gig of memory only. And uh, a lot of uh, the caching material which is uh, uh, stored is running into memory. So this is not just an ordinary Joomla website, you know, hosted on a, a Big Daddy or what is it, Go, Go, Go Daddy uh, website or something familiar with that. This is really optimized up to the maximum level. And the thing I want to show you is like, if you've got a really good professional uh, website uh, um, opportunity and capability for using that, for a customer who has you know, the coin for spending that, uh, you can use it. And you will see that the benefits uh, coming from that are really beneficial. Uh, another thing is definitely reduce the HTTP requests. And the less you have, uh, the better it is. And definitely with CSS and JavaScript. Sometimes I've seen so many Joomla websites having like 10 JavaScript listed in, in, our, uh, in our header. It's like, gee, man, I mean, merge them, get them together, and, and only have one request at, at one time. And that's also with CSS. Using CSS sprites uh, and compressing the content, uh, it's a really good thing. And also, uh, on a default Joomla website, you're probably familiar, you get a, a um, HGAccess file. Everybody familiar with HGAccess HG file? What doesn't happen in that file is there's no uh, information on it on deflating or on expiring. And uh, why uh, isn't it available in a standard Joomla uh, website is because a lot of hosting uh, um, companies, they install cPanel, Plesk, uh, Direct Admin, for instance. And they're all uh, installed just as a plain default uh, uh, hosting environment for getting a lot of websites on there, you know, getting cached and move on. And uh, if you want to deflate, so compress your data and expire the data so it doesn't have to retrieve ever again, uh, you have to compile your Apache uh, uh, by hand. And all those hosting environments, they, they don't do that. You have to compile a, a module called uh, mod deflate and mod expires for using uh, uh, the beneficial stuff on top of your uh, uh, content, which has been brief. Um, also, really important, I've seen a lot of Joomla website, definitely, you know, the, the bigger ones uh, where are a lot of uh, tutorial things going on, they, they, they upload a picture, like, like 3, 4 uh, uh, MB, and they only need like 10 by 20 uh, pixels, for instance. I mean, that's too much. Reduce only the image size you need. So it's like 150 pixels wide. You know, get to Photoshop or some other tool. Uh, GC, for instance, has a really nice thing. You can cut a line. Just optimize them by the, by the size you need. And also mark the width and the height. Because Google sometimes uh, really looks at it and, and they see they want to know the specific of the, of the image itself. And only for the really big, larger websites, if you're familiar with a CDN, um, use it. A content delivery network. Yeah? Yeah. No, I, I'm personally I'm not, yeah. But they're for, for probably familiar with, with using CDN capabilities of sharing the data all across the whole network worldwide. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Joomla, for instance, uh, look in the code for Joomla itself, all the CSS and JavaScript is located on a, a CSS, a C a CDN for Joomla. And what, 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 uh, why? Because, I mean, everybody all, all over the world, you know, going over to the Joomla.org website, uh, knows that once you hit from Amsterdam or from Chicago or from Sydney whatsoever, the only static information, like CSS, images, and JavaScript, are retrieved from that uh, shared hosting of shared uh, from that CDN environment within the area, uh, and that saves a lot of uh, speed also. And you know, besides this list, we can go on for hours, I would say days. But there's a whole list. I mean, otherwise, look on, on the Wyslow or speed test website from Google itself. It goes on and on and on with all kind of tricks depending on what kind of hosting environment you do for sharing this. Otherwise, look at the code um, you will get from Joomla 
uh, minus speed.com and maybe you see some tricks I used over there. Um, well over the professional hosting environment, I already mentioned uh, uh, it's running a VPS. Uh, nowadays everything is running on Apache and uh, personally I'm uh, looking forward more to the possibilities of Nginx of Lighty, uh, Light HTTP because it, it's a different point of view uh, um, uh, how it's located with the processes and how many uh, um, childs and parents you need. I'm sorry? Yeah, it's not for you. That's true. Uh, HTTP access doesn't work with it, so you need a different rule set where you can do the same capabilities who are regularly in, in the HTTP file. You can do it also on Lighty. I know, I know. It's, it's, it's a bitch, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it can be really, definitely, if you got a, a default a website, uh, uh, definitely if it's shared, it sometimes only goes up to 150 child parents in a configuration, and then, you know, it's sometimes definitely how big they are, they're, they're swapping, and, and depending on the process, are available. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't get the last part. Uh, yeah, th th there is, but th it's not called uh, HC access. But there's a, a confer, a confer uh, within the. Um, You can do it all. Yeah, it's it's easier. And the thing is also, I mean, if you're using Apache, the bad thing is not even using uh, HTX file at all, because uh, if you got it in your uh, vhost file or on the HTTP.com file, so on the source directly, uh, and it's re uh, running over there, it's much faster. Also, otherwise by every single different location at different source of reds. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Thanks. Um, Another thing which uh, a lot of hosting uh, guys are not using yet is um, file caching. I mean, uh, uh, xcache, apc, memcache are some things within PHP where the code is it's, you know, combined and, and running into memory. It's, it's, it's much faster. I mean, the Joomla website uh, here, the test website, is using file cache. So by using a temporary file system, mounted in our Unix uh, system, for instance, for some uh, 12, 15, I think this one is running 32 MB, so that's really small amount. Running into memory with only the static files, it's like straightforward because it only needs the I.O. of the system itself. So you, you can gain a lot of performance instead of running it from disk up to, you know, the browser. Once it, once it is uh, located into memory, it's... it's um, Really quick, really quick. Um, some screen over here of minimalizing the requests. Well, like I mentioned earlier, the less requests you get from HTTP um, up to your uh, uh, browser, your customer's browser, the better it is. You can imagine if you got like a thousand requests, every browser, if it's uh, Chrome or Firefox or um, Internet Explorer, sorry for the bad word, um, it, it takes a long time to retrieve and the less you have, the better it is. Sprites, anyone familiar with Sprites? Is there nobody familiar with Sprites? Nobody familiar with Sprites, okay. Um, sprites, well, real easy, a, a combination of one picture 
um, split into CSS um, uh, areas uh, where you can only retrieve one image at one time and uh, just mark them into CSS, uh, how do you divide them over one screen and it's only one request at that time. So definitely would if you get a logo or the ones over here from the afterburner theme, probably everybody recognizes it, it's just the header uh, some image, uh, images uh, um, which are be running on every page at all at the same time. Just just use them in the sprite because it saves a lot of time. Um, compressing the data, like I mentioned earlier, the the uh, compression of the website itself. Well, here uh, mod deflate. Um, once you use that and you use that in the HTAccess file, you will see that your website is being compressed on the website itself, like a zip package retrieved up to the browser, and the browser, every browser we use already has a capability of, you know, de-zipping, of uh, unzipping, for instance. So um, the more you compress it on a server and send it over the browser, the better it is. Yes. On the server side, no, no, is, uh, no uh, if you install or compile the, the module uh, within the server, you can create a, a config file for every website located on that server. And once you uh, uh, configure these parameters, uh, depending on what kind of website you use, I mean, if you've got a a whole different set of websites, for instance, uh, you, one Joomla website is using Darkman, the other one is using for streaming, the other one is just using for content. Depending on the variable you need, you have to uh, um, zip or unzip the content. I mean, it, it, it's like definitely, uh, like over here, uh, an MP3 file is already compressed. So compressing, uncompressing gets a corrupt file. So it's really hard, it's really um, good to know. I mean, you can get some uh, straightforward variables, you know, like zipping the uh, uh, HTML code or CSS code, and maybe uh, uh, put an override code in the HTX file for only using uh, the part that you need. And it depends also on the uh, expire headers. I got one file, for instance, of our Julia website. I think that file is like, uh, twice as long as this one over here because we've got so many different uh, configurations uh, for instance uh, we use uh, uh, service advance uh, for uh, typo typography I'm sorry <laughs> um, and uh, there, there's a W O O O F F file and you got a TTF file you know for all this, uh, the server side fonts you need it's really uh, good to expire all those different media type files within your um, expire modules. Otherwise, every call you make from your browser up to your server, uh, it has to retrieve all the data back and forth. Um, once you expire it on your desktop, it's already cached anyway. It doesn't have to retrieve that call from the server again to see if there's an update. If there's an update, is there an update? So um, it really saves a lot of performance for creating a really good performance file over here. Um, there are some websites later on on this slide. You can see uh, uh, some URLs where you can test, for instance, if your uh, Joomla website is compressed and how many percent you save. You can see over here. It saves a lot of, it saves a lot of data. Reducing the images, well, uh, Jahoo has a really nice tool, Smash It. Anyone familiar with it? Okay, I see a lot of people over there. Well, um, it's really nice using it. The only thing that I have to point out, it doesn't do indexing. So if you really have a bad file uh, uh, created in uh, Photoshop, and it's like 32-bit file, <coughs> Uh, but it only uses uh, uh, um, an 8-pattern uh, color uh, um, thing if, because you're only using two colors, for instance, in your logo and it saves on the 32 bits. It doesn't make sense because the color uh, region that you use is only to maximum of 256. So save it as an 8-bit file, use indexing, for instance, and then 
even smush it. And then you probably see there's no winning anymore. And then you get a really small logo, for instance, from 2K up to maybe 10, depending on how many color difference uh, are located in the color uh, in the logo. But it, it, it saves a lot of time, this one. Well, the CDN, uh, there's a really nice screen over here. Uh, we've been using CDN on Jirio for some time, and it really improves the speed if you have customers abroad um, for retrieving data from your website. And definitely, we have a lot of customers in the United States, and it, it saves a lot of time, I mean, for retrieving only static data from, I think we have six different regions in the United States. Um, here is a nice website uh, we sometimes use for tracking uh, speed data, uh, depending on which location you are. You know, you can retrieve a website, and then there's a whole list of servers worldwide um, for the retrieving this website altogether. And depending on what kind of combination you have, we see here the regular uh, uh, demo website uh, from Joomla is running from uh, this is Harlem, Amsterdam, so located in the Netherlands. This one is running uh, 019, 040 uh, seconds. So that's really quick uh, on a default uh, Joomla website anyway. <coughs> but if you got it optimized, you see you can save a lot of uh, time um, on the website itself. I mean, a website running on 0.9 website, uh, 0 0.9 seconds each request, that's really quick. And you can see when customers come along, and definitely if you want to use it for e-commerce businesses, the faster your website is, and also when Google uh, right now, you know, monitoring uh, anything on that, um, it's getting your ranking, you know, up to speed uh, anyway. And, and the conversion rate for customers are, are better because they don't have a timeout or the website is not slow uh, once you buy a product, for instance, or, you know, Here's a list of some te uh, techniques I use and some URLs. I put this uh, presentation later online, so you can uh, uh, yeah, go to SlideShare. This website, oh, I mean, this presentation is uh, being sh shared on SlideShare anyway, so uh, otherwise by the, the JM Beyond website. Check out some websites I've been using here. And uh, this one, this is the original Joomla speed test. URL I've been using uh, for the, the data and what's been used, uh, what, what, what's been going on with that. And the, the coolest thing with G2 metrics is that they have now uh, a monitoring device where you can see every day uh, once they uh, um, monitor your website, you can put more websites into that at one time, um, how it's going up and down, depending on how many changes you have. I mean, you can imagine when you start a project and you finish it, you probably see once you register the website, then it's going up or down, depending on what kind of things you do with CSS or JavaScript altogether. So that's really, really nice tool for completing the job, you know, in the end. Uh, with our customers, uh, and also with the speed performing testing we are doing, um, a lot of things, are being retrieved from G2 metrics as a, you know, uh, a recognition point for from from going over there and let's see what we have to do for going over and and get this website up to speed again. Definitely for if it's an e-commerce uh, uh, website. Um, well, if you need some more information uh, for the people who don't have a, a, a water bottle, we have more back there so uh, come and join and if you have any questions I mean shoot me uh, otherwise uh, maybe we can have a drink later on and talk some more about speed I hope you like it and uh, thanks for coming anybody questions yes yes Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a notification, um, the expiring, that's a notification um, of how many seconds you want to expire this uh, type, uh, this media type. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Um, 
Why? That's a good thing. I mean, I could put, I, I, I can use an A, I mean a one, a zero. Once you use zero, there's no expiration at all. So I'm using it for, for like five days. And it's just a guess. Sometimes I'm using one day, depending on which kind of uh, content I'm using on the website. I mean, the thing is, once the browser retrieves the first request of a website, if it's brand new, the only thing which is being recognized by the browser is like, okay, this is brand new. Let's see what has been retrieved or what which I have to store, you know, on my local cache. And once you hit a, a next website, wha what happens is this file l lets in, uh, the, the browser and the server know which files are have to be requested again or which I have to be stored. Once I, for instance, uh, leave my browser and I want to clean my cache and my cookies, for instance, everything's been dropped again. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Yo. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, that's no magic number. And we can do it for a day. I mean, well, once I hit Control uh, F5, for instance, and a hard refresh, everything's been retrieved once again. So it, it, it's mostly fooling the browser. Because my browser uh, is the only one, uh, once I hit this button, for instance, go to uh, a block, uh, which has to know which content do I have to retrieve from the server, or which content can I get from my local cache, for instance. And you can see there are really nice tools in the, the web developer toolbar uh, of Firebug, for instance. Everybody familiar with Firebug? Probably, yeah. Uh, within Firebug, you have the uh, capability of using uh, net. If you use the net button and you refresh your website, you will see a flow going along with all the data which has been retrieved and how many requests are being taken. And you see also error codes like 200 or maybe 500 or uh, depending on, on, on which content you want to get. Some images or some images, some data which are being stored, you probably see grayed out, uh, rec uh, located from cache. And then on the end, really on the, on the bottom, you will see so many uh, bits and bytes uh, uh, retrieved and so many from cache located. And then you see how many only is the new content, you know, retrieving from the server. And if it's only, for instance, a block, which is only text, for instance, and the whole theme stays together and is combined with a really good CSS, uh, Sprite, for instance, and JavaScript, the only thing which we have to retrieve from the server up to the browser is the only content area of, of text, for instance, and then the new images. They otherwise, have to stay, stay, stay the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah, it, it's too much. It's too much. I mean, maybe a, a small thing which I found out uh, is a lot of um, Joomla components, plugins, and uh, modules uh, from some vendors are, uh, they have their own CSS and JavaScript files stored in their own directory. That sucks big time. Why? Because uh, you cannot combine those CSS files or JavaScript files or images together. What the core team uh, created in 1.5 in the early beginnings, and I mean, move up to Joan, for instance, and ask him, they created a media file, a media directory. And the media directory is the only directory used for combining static information files located only there. So if you create a module or a plugin, for instance, and they use static information, don't store them in a template override, or for instance, but use it with the static information directory located there. Because once you use the caching opportunity in Joomla, all the information stored over there is retrieved and copied into a cache file.
That's, that's, that's true, but not everybody has the capability or customers uh, uh, for having the amount spending it. You know, that's why, you know, uh, it's a list of all possibilities. If you have, uh, you know, your cash for, for, you know, buying a dedicated server and you want to retrieve every capability of using that, just go ahead. Uh, other people want to use a shared environment and they want to have the benefits of the small things they're going to use for even improving, you know, for their customers. So, but the story is true. The more money you have, the more power you get. Oh, that's true, but uh, if I can make one point, uh, I've seen a lot of VPSs installed. Some of them are always missing mod expires, mod deflate. I mean, I can compile them, but I don't know many people are familiar with compiling. I know. That's true. And then you probably go to a really, then you really have to know your hosting environment you know which are using the capabilities and the performed mysql <laughs> queries for instance and and uh, how many cache uh, you want to use and how many memory you you know put into it 
then you need a specialist, a hardcore specialist for combining that on the VPS or VDS. So, any one? That's correct. Where from? That's a good thing. What I'm doing right now, and, and, and I having, I, I talked to my coll colleagues this week uh, since they created this new new analytics thing, is what I've been missing is where do I uh, uh, reckon you know the information for, and which type of connection do I use? Because if I'm using a 56k modem, for instance, I mean I'm going back to the dark ages, and I probably my Joomla website is taking ages to be retrieved. So it's an average amount of nothing. The only thing which you can test, for instance, if using a, a, a laptop, and what I do myself is I have a lot of VPN connections all over the world. Um, once I log in, for instance, to the VPN connection from Amsterdam to San Francisco, San Francisco is my entry point. From San Francisco or, for instance, from uh, Sydney, uh, I test websites different from, from customers who are being used in the region. And then I use the time region in my browser, seeing what, what the time is. But for instance, if you have uh, 20 uh, uh, tabs you know, in Firefox open, and uh, you're uh, losing a lot of memory within you know, your Firefox browser, your website also getting really slow. So what are the estimates you know, for running that? The best thing what I do is, a clean laptop uh, and a clean uh, testing environment for using a, a single test environment uh, to, to get it up to speed from location A to B. And tools like, like a host tracker, this one for instance, uh, whatever host tracker, is the one uh, which I've been using for locating a, a website from all different areas all over the world, seeing what the difference is. And, and, and you can, you know, uh, make an average you know, screen from that uh, for, for seeing uh, how websites are being measured and, and what's really important and what's not. But the thing within Google Analytics is the thing is they measure right now and they're gonna, I think, people uh, uh, let them know how to, you know, search into the uh, uh, Google search itself. But I think a lot of people are going to let them know, it's like, okay, it's cool that you have a five or four or whatever average on every page, but from where? Because it, if it's only located in, in the United States or England, and those are the customers located over there, that's the speed which has to be measured. And not from Amsterdam, for instance, if customers come over there, that doesn't make any sense. Because if it's 10 seconds over there, uh, uh, what Google uh, should not do, but that's personally my re uh, uh, is uh, deduct points, for instance, from people uh, who are coming from you know other e areas and want to visit your websites. If it, if it's slow from that area, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, it's a new tool they are using now, uh, uh, I mean, in the Webmaster Tools for a year already, and the ones over in Google Analytics now since last Wednesday. Uh, what I've seen and I tested already, websites we created who are having a really good speed on a local basis, uh, they get indexed uh, within a couple of days, and blogs, for instance, on the website within Joomla are lo located in almost one or two days on the first page of Google. So. What I've seen in the last year is how quicker the website gets, how, and, and also how good your SEO is, for instance. It's adding up speed, good content, good data, good theming, good uh, everything. Yeah. Yeah, I would choose. But the thing is, with, with Joomla, uh, I mean, there, there are a lot of extensions available. Well, what you cannot do is create a, a shadow copy. With Nuku Server, you can. Uh, you, uh, the best thing is to create a shadow copy in every single uh, uh, country, uh, for instance, like, like um, Facebook does. I mean, you can see the speed and the environment, and Google itself. I mean, every uh, Google search server is, is located in Groningen, in Holland. 
So once you hit Google, retrieves to google.nl, and this server is located in Groningen. So, I mean, I can imagine that, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, it's coffee time. Okay, guys, thanks.